Hi, my name is Sarah Della Greek. I'm Christopher Mallison. And we will be doing a scene from As You Like It. I will be playing Rosalind. And I will be playing Orlando. And prior to this scene, Orlando has been running through the forest, putting up love poems um, about his love for Rosalind. And um, I am currently dressed as Ganymede, um, her male counterpart, her alias. And Ganymede is teaching me, or teaching Orlando, how to <coughs> woo Rosalind. Pardon me, dear Rosalind. Nay, and you be so tardy, come no more in my sight. I had as lief be wooed of a snail. Of a snail? Aye, of a snail. For though he comes slowly, he carries his house on his head. A better jointure, I think, than you make a woman. Besides, he brings his destiny with him. What's that? Why, horns, which such as you are fain to be beholden to your wives for. But he comes armed in his fortune and prevents the slander of his wife. Virtue is no horn maker, and my Rosalind is virtuous. And I am your Rosalind. Come, woo me, woo me, for I am now in a holiday humor, and like enough to consent. What would you say to me now if I were your very, very Rosalind? I would kiss before I spoke. Nay, you were better speak first, and then when you were graveled for lack of matter, you might take occasion to kiss. A good orator, when they are out, they will spit, and lovers for lacking God matter, matter. The cleanliest shift is the kiss. How if the kiss be denied? Well, then she puts you to entreaty, and there begins new matter. Oh, who could be out being before his beloved mistress? Mary, you should that I were your mistress, or I would think my honesty ranker than my wit. What, of my suit? Not out of your apparel, and yet out of your suit. Am I not your Rosalind? I take some joy to say that you are, because I would be talking of her. Well, in her person, I say I will not have you. Then, in my person, I die. Oh, nay! <laughs> I die by attorney. The whole world is almost 6,000 years old, and in all that time, men have died in their own person, but illicit a love cause. Men have died from time to time, and worms have eaten them, but not for love. Oh, I would not have my right Rosalind of this mind, for I protest her frown might kill me. By this hand, it will not kill a fly. Now, I will be your Rosalind in, your, in a more coming-on disposition. Give me what you will, I will grant it. Then love me, Rosalind. Yes, faith, I will, Fridays and Saturdays and all. <laughs> <laughs> and wilt thou have me? I, and twenty such. What sayest thou? Are you not good? I hope so. Why then can one desire too much of a good thing? Come, sister, be the priest and marry us. Give me your hand, Orlando. What sayest thou, sister? I cannot say the words. You must begin, will you, Orlando? Go to, will you, Orlando, have to wife this Rosalind? I will. I but when? Why, now, as fast as she can marry us. Then you must say, I take thee, Rosalind, for wife. I take thee, Rosalind, for wife. I might ask your commission first, but I do take thee, Orlando, for my husband. There's a girl runs before the priest, and a woman's thoughts runs before her actions. So do all thoughts. They are winged. Now, um, tell me, how long will you have her after you have possessed her? Forever and a day. Say a day without the ever. No, Orlando, men are April when they woo, December when they wed. Maids are may when they are maids, but the sky changes when they are wives. I will be more jealous over thee than a Barbary cock pigeon over his hen, more clamorous than a parrot against rain, more newfangled than an ape, more giddy in my desires than a monkey. I will weep for nothing like Diana in the fountain, and I will do so when thou art disposed to be married. I will laugh like a hyen when thou art inclined to sleep. But will my Rosalind do so? By my life she will do as I do. Oh, but she is wise. Or else she could not have the wit to do this. Make the doors on a woman's wit, and it will out at the casement. Shut that, twill out at the keyhole. Mark that, twill fly with the smoke out the chimney. A man that had a wife with such a wit might say, wit with her wilt. Nay, 
You can keep the check for it till you match your name, your wife's wit going to your neighbor's bed. <laughs> <laughs> what wit could wit have to excuse that? Mary, to say she came to seek you there. You shall never take a woman without her answer unless you take her without her tongue. Oh, that woman that cannot make her, her faults her husband's occasion, let them not nurse their own child, for there she'll bear it like a fool. For these two hours, I must leave thee, Rosalind. Alas, dear love, I cannot lack thee two hours. <laughs> I must attend the Duke at dinner. By two o'clock, I will be with thee again. I go your ways, go your ways. I knew what you would prove, my friends told me as much, and I thought no less. That flattering tongue of yours won me. Two o'clock is your hour. I sweet Rosalind. By my faith, and in good earnest, and in God amend thee, and all pretty oaths that are not dangerous, if you break one jot of your promise, or come one minute behind your hour, I will think thee the most unpathetical break promise, and the most hollow lover, and the most unworthy of her you call Rosalind, in the gross band of the unfaithful. Therefore, beware my censure, and keep your promise. With no less religion than if thou wert indeed my Rosalind. So adieu. Well, time is the old justice that examines all such offenders, and let time try. Adieu. <laughs>